Today, Gabby and I are going to be doing a DIY project for Raiden's room, and it's pretty much a wall shelf made out of the Mario bricks and the famous Mario question mark. So let me show you all, all of the things that we're gonna be using today for this project. We have a Gabby, we're gonna be using Gabby for the project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a fool! So for this project, we're gonna be using 10 six by six by six boxes. We also have some light brown paint and I use the color Nutmeg. We have dark brown paint, which is, this one is burnt umber. Burnt damn. And we also have yellow. I bought three bottles of yellow, three bottles of burnt umber, and this is more than enough Nutmeg. I also have a dark yellow, and um, I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut out the question mark that we're gonna be using on the yellow boxes. I'm using some E6000, and we also have some paint brushes. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this project. The first thing you want to do is take your cardboard and fold it into a box. Next, you want to apply some E6000 glue. Be sure to apply a generous amount. Now, my flaps would not stay just with the E6000 glue. I had to break out the glue gun in addition to the E6000 glue. I also used some tape to tape the flaps down while the glue dried as an added measure. After about a few hours, I removed the tape and I applied the burnt umber paint. Now, I only painted the sides that would be visible once you hang it on the wall. So, for the inside boxes, I painted three sides, and for the outside boxes, I painted all the sides except for the one that's facing the wall. This is what it looks like after the first coat, so I'm gonna let that dry. And with this paint, it dries pretty fast. I ended up painting six of the boxes brown, and depending on how dark you want your mortar to be, you want to add extra coats of paint. Next, you want to paint your yellow boxes, and I had a total of four yellow boxes. As we know, the yellow boxes are going to serve as that yellow question mark. And with the yellow, we had to apply a few extra coats of paint. This is what the brown looks like, all painted after about two coats. Next, you wanna get some transparent tape and you want to tape off the sections that will create the mortar in the bricks. and you want to position the tape just right. And if you get it wrong, you can always remove the tape and reapply it. And when you're applying the tape, be sure to secure it to the box. You don't want any paint to seep through that transparent tape. You want to follow this pattern for the remaining brown boxes. Once you get all of your transparent tape on the box, it will look like this. You want to take your nutmeg paint and paint over the transparent tape. The dark brown is going to serve as the mortar 
and the light brown is going to be the color of the brick. We actually applied about four coats of the nutmeg brown. We just wanted to make sure that the dark brown didn't show through. So here Gabby is applying extra coats to those yellow boxes and I'm adding more coats to the light brown, which is the nutmeg. Next, you want to very, very, very carefully remove the tape because if you go too fast, it will take some of the cardboard and the paint along with it. So be very careful when removing your tape. And this is how it will look once all the tape is removed. That looks cool, y'all. Next, I'm going to paint in the question mark. What I did was I took some cardboard and cut out a question mark. And I'm going to paint it white onto the yellow box. Once the boxes were dried, I took some E6000 in addition to my glue gun because the E6000 would not stick without reinforcement, which was my glue gun. Y'all, I was over here struggling big time with this glue gun because I broke the trigger. So I'm struggling trying to push the glue stick into the glue gun. I have tape on the back. I taped the boxes together as an added measure while the glue dried. And this is what it will look like all put together. Once you notice, I still have the tape on the backs and it's basically serving as reinforcement, but the, you want to cut holes in the back and they don't have to be perfect. Mine are not perfect, but you want to cut holes in the back so that you're able to hang them onto the wall. This is pretty much what it looks like when it's face down. Notice I didn't paint the back because this is going to be towards the wall so I didn't worry about painting that. I took three long nails and nailed them to the wall and that's how I was able to get this DIY wall shelf to hang on the wall. enjoyed this project if you did go ahead and give us a big thumbs up show us some love with the likes comment down below because we love talking to y'all in the comments if you're not a part of our family go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the family we would love to have you over here and we will see you in the next video bye everyone yeah so how do you like your how do you like the boxes that's so i don't know how you got them to look so accurate <laughs> I was like, I focus on my phone when I focus on the box, but this entire room is just, it's, it's not only how I do Jordan's room. Mm -hmm. I'm satisfied with this room.